What's going on with y'all? Hey, what's going on with everybody? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So uh, welcome to the Fish Corner. So we are over here on Saltwater Row. And, uh, you know, I have about five saltwater aquariums that need to be cleaned today. I've been real busy. I don't know if y'all caught the last video, but I was busy building a 1,200-gallon plywood aquarium. So uh, between that and work and family, I've been getting a little, you know, behind on some of this maintenance. So, um, you know, typically I would just do this off camera, but, you know, I got five tanks to clean. Hopefully it don't take me five hours to clean them. But uh, nonetheless, I just wanted to do it with you all, show you how I could possibly give you guys some tips in case you want to take something from some of the methods I'm using. So when you do your own saltwater aquariums or you could apply it to your freshwater aquariums, etc. So uh, this is a tw this is a 125 gallon saltwater aquarium right here. And these are two 20 gallon quarantine saltwater aquariums. And then we also have a 55 gallon saltwater aquarium right there. We have a 37 gallon saltwater aquarium right there. And then we have a 225 gallon saltwater aquarium over there. Now, I don't think I have enough water in my 125 gallon reservoir right here. So this is just a 125 gallon aquarium. I use it just for it, just to hold all my salt water. So I make my salt water right here. I keep it right there and I pull from it whenever I need it. So uh, the benefit of having this 125 gallon aquarium right here is that when I put my pump in here, I can reach the 225. Clearly I can reach this 125. It reaches to the 220 gallons to the 55 and the 37. So it reaches all the aquariums, all the saltwater aquariums in this fish room. Now, I will make this more efficient a little bit later. As you can see, I've been busy, but I will make this more efficient. And um, just so, you know, I like, I don't want it automated. I do not want it automated. I like automated too, but you know what? I like to come in here and know what's going on. So I want to come in here and turn the valves off myself. But nonetheless, me being able to just Cut, turn a couple valves and I will be able to either pull water from these aquariums or add water to these aquariums That's gonna make my life so much easier I have it situated like that for a bunch of the freshwater aquariums as far as the RODI water that goes into these aquariums is Definitely just a flip of the valve. So that's what I plan on doing long term But for now we do need to clean these aquariums now these aquariums have a ton of cyanobacteria now, why do they have cyanobacteria? Because one, flow, two, lighting. I don't have great lightings on these. On the, I don't have great lighting on any of my saltwater aquariums. None of them have great lighting. So when you don't have great lighting, you don't have a ton of flow, you, get, you can create some cyanobacteria. So um, the problem with leaving cyanobacteria in your, in your aquarium is that it, it absorbs the oxygen in your aquarium. So long term, it could actually be harmful to your fish. Just with it looking like this, it looks bad. It's not as bad as you might think it is. But if you continue to leave it, or if it gets worse, it can become harmful to your fish. So make sure that if you have the time, you get on it. Get on it as fast as you possibly can. And um, that's the best uh, advice I could give you. So let's take a look at this 125. You're probably going to be like, oh my goodness. I feel like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Check it out. So uh, the rock work. You see how the, you see what color is supposed to be, and you see all of that on top of there. That red slime. Also, they call it purple slime. That is cyano. All on the sand. But I only have this one circulation pump, and I have it pushing up here to help with the oxygen exchange. So that's going to create the oxygen, the ripples in the water. That's going to create the oxygen in the water. So that's why. I focus my circulation pump on the top. You see all the little micro bubbles? Yeah, so that's everywhere, right? You see those micro bubbles everywhere throughout the tank. So it really helps with the oxygen. So um, I can definitely use a couple more pumps, circulation pumps, at least one down below, maybe two. But nonetheless, we're going to keep using it like this for, for the time being. Um, I do want to move these guys out. They are about ready to go on a 225 gallon aquarium. This lionfish, as well as my stars and stripes puffer right there, are both getting quite large and are just about ready to go over there to that 225 gallon. 
Now they can stay in here for some more time, believe that. But I do want to move some other fish into here. We have Joker right here that's in quarantine. I got to clean his tank as well. But Joker right here in quarantine, he's not even in quarantine. Well, he kind of is. So not only do I have to put him in here because he's a, uh, a murderous fish, but also because I wanted to just keep a closer eye on him. So every day after I feed him, his midsection, his stomach is sunken in. But then when I feed him, he's plumped out looking good, just like how he looks right now. But uh, every day tomorrow, he's gonna be, it's going to be sunken in again. So I've been medicating him with Prazi Pro to see if that's going to, and also been medicating the food, and nothing has changed. It remains the same. Nonetheless, I want to move him out. I'll probably move him into this 55 gallon right here. So um, this fish right here, this is a queen angelfish. This is the juvenile queen angelfish. And this fish is just about ready to move out of quarantine. Healthy as can be. No issues whatsoever. Really good with eating. Just ready to move into a uh, more of a permanent home. Not this 20 gallon. So this fish will potentially move into this 125 gallon. Or it might even go inside the house. Not quite sure yet, but we have some things we could do. Now, in this 55 gallon, we got to, let's look at it from the side. In this 55 gallon right here, we have our small, very, very small, it's, they, they sold it to me as a starry trigger fish. But I think this is a Titan trigger fish. It looks just like a Titan trigger fish. Looks exactly so small I can't even focus on them. Look exactly like a Titan trigger fish. Nonetheless, and then we have this striped puffer fish. Now this guy is getting kind of big. Now we've had him for some time now. He was actually one of the first saltwater fish I bought after losing all of my fish so many months ago. So these two fish potentially go right back into the 125. I also have over here another tank that needs to be cleaned. This is my scribble dog face puffer. And again, definitely got to clean this aquarium but he's been in quarantine. He's doing good, eating well, ready to come out of quarantine. This is the only fish that got to be separated. And so he does get quite big, so I got to make sure that I still keep him in a, you know, a fair home. This one will work for a while. Other than that, he could go back to the store. But we're not going to give up on him. We could find some tank mates for him. If we could find some tank mates for him. We could definitely just keep him with the aggressive, you know, the aggressive guys. We'll see. So I have one, two, three, four to clean. You see, I didn't say nothing about the, about the angelfish tank. That tank looks fine. And then, and then I got to clean this 225. Now the light has not since died on the 225. The plug shorted out, so I got to get another plug. But we have in here our Tess Alata eel, who is hungry. Yeah, that's, that's Tess right here. And then we have over here Bart. It's like, he's like, it's almost like he heard me call his name. So, yeah. So, I'm trying, I want to move, I want to move the lionfish and the pufferfish over here with these guys. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they could, they can make it. I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. But you know what? When we do it, we'll make sure we, uh, we're very cautious. We spend a lot of time watching afterwards to make sure nothing happens. But then also we'll make sure that these guys are fed. They're not really known to go after fish. So we'll see. Anyway, they're looking pretty aggressive because they're wanting to eat right now. All right, so let's go ahead and clean some aquariums. So first things first, 
what I typically like to do is remove all the rock first and then I clean the rock in the water. The reason why I do it that way is because if you spray, like literally you could just blow a fan or just, just disturb the water around the cyanobacteria and it's going to literally just kick up. It's also called cyano, um, cyanoalgae. So uh, they have something called ChemiClean. I've tried it before. It's like poison. I wouldn't recommend that. But uh, so I just go in here. Like I said, if you have corals, you can't do this. If you have corals, this is going to be bad for your aquarium anyway, having a ton of cyanobacteria probably kill your corals. So um, anyway, I don't have corals. Just fish in here. Fowler tank fish only with live rock. I think that's so funny to say live rock because any rock that sits in your aquarium after the beneficial bacteria colonize on it becomes live rock. So it's not essentially like live rock, like how they try to make it seem. It's just rock with live beneficial bacteria on it. Anyway, so let me go ahead and pull out all of this rock. I'm gonna put it in one trash can and then we'll go ahead and get in here. I'll sand back, pull out the water, put everything back in here and it's gonna be that simple. Also, I have to wipe off the glass. So uh, some of y'all seen this before, some of y'all haven't. Again, I'm not gonna put you through all of it. But I uh, definitely want to let you guys see some of it. All right, let's get to it. Got to make sure that my eel is on the right side of the tank. The side that I'm not disturbing. The side that I'm not disturbing is the right side. And he's actually on the side that I am disturbing. Well, I'm pretty sure he's going to move out. Soon as he see that I'm moving this rock that's right above him. There we go. Just like that. And you can see... As I'm pulling out the rocks, nothing is coming loose. And that's what I mean. It's gonna be a lot faster to clean it this way. And I know a bunch of people are probably gonna say that they don't do it this way. And that's all good. You know, do it any way that you wanna do it. Just do it. Just clean your aquariums. I don't care how you do it. It's more than one way. It's always more than one way to get things done. So I'll also take my razor to clean off to clean off the glass a little bit better because the sponges don't work that well with saltwater aquariums, in my opinion. hear that uh, circulation pump I'll probably have to drop that down a bit so now I got two options and I'll probably take that option so I'm gonna clean this side I'm clean half at a time that's what I'm gonna do so I'll grab look we got the sponge we got the razor so you want to be careful in the corners when you're using these razors because it could really mess with your silicone A lot of aquarium cleaning, y'all. I got work tonight. Start off with the razor. You know what? Start off with the sponge first. That way I can see what I can't get with the razor. Getting, getting that back glass. Yeah, salt water. Salt water algae is gnarly. It's real difficult to clean. Okay, 
Just like that, y'all. So simple enough, right? And there goes some of that cyano that just got kicked up. Look at it. So I'll just have to catch that with my uh, with my net. Yes, no joke. No joke. See that flying around? See all that floating around? Yep. All that. So usually in that situation, that's when I take my net and then I'll just, you know, just catch it all or as much as I can because it's still living. Whatever you don't get out the tank, it's going to land wherever it is, where it's going to land and it's going to grow all over again. So get out as much as you can every time. That's why I go to the extreme of pulling out the rock. And there's no invertebrates. There's no, there's nothing that's going to eat that. No fish, nothing. They don't fool with it. Somebody else might know something different. If you do, get in the comments and let us all know. Because uh, I don't know anything that does anything with the cyano. I don't know any animal that eats it. There we go. Okay. So I can't get a lot of, so I'm going to have to hit it with the go ahead and hit it with the razor now bring you in closer there you go part of the action Twenty gallon is gonna be so quick and easy, as you all could, could guess. It's, it's so small, don't have sand, no cyano. Even the two twenty five is gonna be easy, but the fifty five is gonna be a challenge because that's right there next to the garage opening. Get the most light. That's why the cyano is the worst. Nonetheless, we're gonna get it done. I really don't like getting, letting my aquariums get like this. Believe and trust that. But when you have so many aquariums and you have your have a business or a job, y'all know y'all y'all work. Y'all know it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you got a little one and two fish rooms, and it's not easy. So it happens to me for sure. But I get to it. And as you can see, I care about my animals. I do the best I can. And in the end, that's all we can do. Yeah, this razor really does a good job even getting a lot of the algae out from in between some of the scratches. And it got scratches from rocks. Rocks scraping up against the glass. And yeah, so... But this really works pretty good. All right. Might as well get some of that off in the back. It don't have to be all of it. Believe me, it don't. You can get off all of it if you want. Some of it. Just none of it. It's not an option. It's not an option, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. 
Keep your tank however you want to keep it. I just hope that you care about your animals and you uh, do right by them. All right. Pretty much, I think, uh, I think that's this side. Let's see. If I wipe the glass and I see it's nothing on this side, then I know I could just go ahead and oh, on the bottom. But yeah, so it's a tedious process, y'all. And I tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you, I never get the tank as clean as I want it to be. Every time I finish, I feel like it could be better. Every time. But as the next couple of days wear on, you allow your aquarium, your bacteria, to come back and do and actually help you. Not really come back, but really able to get a hold of things. Because sometimes when you don't remove these nitrates, it becomes overwhelming for your beneficial bacteria and they can't handle it. That's how you crash an aquarium. So when you go in and do your water changes and clean your tanks, you take out some of that bad bacteria. So then your good bacteria could regroup and it could handle the bad bacteria. So make sure you're doing your part. You wanna work with your aquariums. You know what I mean? You can't, uh, don't, don't ever expect, don't ever expect your aquarium to do all the work for you. And if you're smart, you will not do all the work and not allow your aquarium to do some of the work. So, uh, you know, that comes in the form of beneficial bacteria. That comes in the form of plants. That, that comes in the form of, you know, your different types of filtration because, you're, again, the beneficial bacteria lives up in there. So those are the two natural ways of filtering your aquarium. The beneficial bacteria that's facilitating the nitrogen cycle. And then you have plants and things like that. Even salt water has certain plants like mangrove that grows um, out the water but you know maybe we'll do a man big mangrove over there or something you never know so now let's go ahead and siphon out some of this nasty yucky water right get that on up out of there all right so this is the part that I like, like I was saying I want to make this easier But it's going to be like night and day. Watch, you, you don't even see the sand. You can't even really see how good this side is actually looking. But trust me, it's definitely a difference. So yeah, just skim the top. Get all that debris. A lot of the time it's too heavy. And it just wants to go right back down, right out of the tube. So what you do is, you just try to keep it suspended in there and then when you can you'll just pull it out and dump that part because the thing you don't want you don't want all that sand going out so the way to stop the sand back up off of it you see I came up off let the sand come out look at all that all that crud that I actually wanted to stay so you learn it's a little trick to it but you see why it's necessary? Look at that. And for me, it's satisfying. I do not like cyanoalgae. And I know the fish don't either. So even with that, that's what I mean when I say you could allow some of the bacteria to actually manage some of that gunk that's that's still in the aquarium that you don't get out or can't get out look just like that let me show you how I plan on getting all this crud oh, come here yep So 
So yeah, so check it out. Watch one. Oh yeah, I need all that. So yeah, let me show you what you do is. Let all the sand out, right? See, let all the sand out. So now we just want to get all the sand on. Try to let all the sand out, but try to keep the sand on. Just like that. Big pieces too. So now all you do is See how it still wants to come out? It's kind of heavy. So now you just tip it. You could do a couple things. Sacrifice some sand like that. Or you could just, just dump it. All right. So let me go ahead and just get this done. I still got to do the other side. And then uh, we'll move on to the next tank. Alright, so now, now that I got that side down, I'll basically put, nah, let me go ahead and, uh, and grab some more of this stuff. I got to wipe down all of that. I see sign on everything. So look, now I'm going to take this little, take this, and I'm still going to blow it. Now I'm about to do that, blow it off everything. And this is what I didn't want to do, but it's, at least it's not on. I'm not doing this to the rock. But I definitely got to do this because this is a mess. Like I said, the more you leave on, the faster it comes back. catch it all with the net as much as I can. Man. Yep. Everywhere. All right. So now y'all see the struggle with this cyano. Check it out. See? Like night and day. So let's go ahead and take care of this side. So now, let's go ahead and use this pump to remove the remaining of this water. That way, 
it'll be a lot faster. So this is the same pump that I use to pump the water out and to pump the water in. This thing is handy. I highly recommend you getting it. Take this phone out so you don't see my underwear. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead, plug this in. I need water in order to clean, in order to clean the rocks. So I'm pretty sure this gives you an idea of why not always easy to take the time to clean this. Just like that. Ah. Nope, not yet. just running it under the water will get it off but you can't use your water hose kill all your beneficial bacteria you gotta use this tank water just like that so now I think that's all the water I want to pull out break the siphon Push the pump down some more. Now, that one is looking a bit low. Sounds a bit low as well. So now, let me go ahead and quickly clean these. So now that I got about half a trash can of water, to go in there, shake the rock around, brush it a bit. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Now when I have five tanks to clean y'all, just like that, boom. Look at that. See what a good shake would do. Not much. Pull out the brush like I said. Mix the brush with the shake. Give it a couple seconds, talk to it for a second. You count to 10 and that should be all that's needed. See? Check it out. Alright, y'all missed that one? Let's go. Look at that. Give it a shake first. See if the uh, nope, a little bit shook off. But it shouldn't be shouldn't take long at all, y'all. Just like that. Just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of these real quick. All right, quick work of these now. And this brush is just like, just a brush that you would use, like a tile brush, a grout brush actually. Well, same thing. Tile, grout. I like that one because the bristles are harder. But I also have the one uh, that we use for the kitchen too, right? Let's try with that one. That one's going to work too. So just in case that's all you got, the old one, you want a reason to grab a new one, go ahead and disinfect your old one, bleach it, let it dry, good to go. Some people will argue that, like I said, bleach it, let it dry, you're good to go. And this one works too. It just can't get in like the little crevices like this other one can. So that's why I went ahead and got that one. That one cleaned a bit better. Look at that. You ain't recording, babe. So, you, ain't cam you on camera now? 
<laughs> what time is it? All right, what time is it? 12, 1 o'clock? Okay. 12.58. Yeah, 12.58. All right, so as you can see, got a few rocks to clean, and uh, you don't have to you don't have to wait around for that. So I'll get back with you in just a second. Look at that! Just came together real quick, real easy. Look how clean this thing looks. All right, so now let's get on over here. Some more big rocks in here that's looking a little, you know, looking a little, that needs to be taken care of. All right. It's good in there. Look, look, see? See that crack? See how this brush really just get in there? Look at that. That's why I recommend they get tile brush and a good grout brush. Keep saying tile brush. Look at that. And even though some people recommend or will try to tell you don't do it like that, do whatever you want. Right now, I'm just showing you what I do. And you probably wouldn't have to do this, but I'm showing you the method. I guess it's a lot of work, right? We probably got to do it like this because I don't have a skimmer, right? I don't have a skimmer on this aquarium. I don't have the traditional sump. I don't have any of that stuff. So, you know, it's, it's a little more work for me. But you know what? I don't mind. If I was on freshwater tanks, I'd be doing the same thing, right? The only difference is that saltwater aquarium. Now, don't get me wrong, those setups are amazing. Those, those reefer setups, the, the red seas, the, the water box setups, amazing, amazing. I have nothing to, but I have nothing to say about it that's negative at all. I just feel like, like I say all the time, fish keeping is art. We all can have our art, create our art any way we choose to. So for my saltwater, for, so for the saltwater fish keeping, I went and got all the high tech stuff, but I found that you don't really need it. Is it helpful? Of course. Let me ask you this question. Is a canister more helpful than a hang on the back filter for a large aquarium? Is it more helpful than a sponge filter? I mean, it's, it, that answers your question. So obviously there's more ways of keeping a freshwater aquarium than just keeping it one way. So there's easier ways. Oh, I need that. Oh, that's, is that, that's coffee. I, I need some, I need some tea, babe. Could you give me the bottle? Could you uh, throw one of those bottles on some ice, please? So like I was saying, you could, there's so many different ways for you to keep your fish. And I just want to show you one of the ways to keep saltwater fish. Now, if this is too much for you, you don't want the work, I get it. Like you can either wait until you get, you know, four or five, seven, ten thousand dollars, get you a nice large uh, system like that. Or you could say, I might just get started, go grab you an aquarium, you know, do some research, watch a few of my videos, or I tell you right now, grab you an aquarium, get you live rock, get you live sand, buy your saltwater. Make sure you have a nice aquarium, heater, filter, light. You take your tank, put the sand in there, put the water in there. Well, put the sand in there, put the live rock in there, put the water in there. Make sure your filter's working, cut it on. You wait 24 hours. If your tank clears up at 24 hours, add fish. If it clears up at 48 hours, wait then, add fish. Your tank still will have to cycle, but you have enough beneficial bacteria in there to keep your fish alive while you're taking cycling. This is called a fish cycle. Doing it this way don't eliminate the cycle. This just allows you to add fish 
and have a cycle with fish. Thank you, babe. And have fish with your cycle instead of doing a fishless cycle, which can take a long time because how is it going to build a bacteria if you don't have anything in there that's creating ammonia? Some people add different stuff in the tank. I'm going to add me a live fish in the tank. You got a hardy fish. You select the right fish. You don't have to worry about it dying during the, during the cycling process. Like I said, just get started. Whatever it takes, just get started. Don't allow people to scare you out of the hobby. Don't allow them to intimidate you. This is not that hard. It takes time. You're going to learn. You're going to make mistakes. That's life. We make mistakes in life, not just fish keeping. So keep that in mind. And uh, if anybody else got something, neg if people got something negative to say about you getting started, just ignore it. It's always going to be a hater. You know, they said Jesus walked on water because he can't swim. All right. So now let's go ahead and add the rock to this side. We'll add the water back into this tank and then we're done. So I love this purple rock right here. This is not real coralline algae on the rock, but this is what coralline, coralline algae is supposed to look like. But I love the, the, uh, the, the manufactured rock. This purple stuff is really, really beautiful. Now we just got to add more water back to it and we're done. That's one tank down. Woo! One tank down took about an hour. Took about an hour for this one. So luckily, this was one of the longest ones. So like I said, I didn't want to be doing this all day. Come on. So filling this up is easy, like I've already admitted. So we drop this in. Right into there, just like that. Drop that part in the top. Unplug it up, and that's it. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug it up for you. Voila, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, man, was that long, y'all? Take a long time? Felt like it did. Definitely felt like it did. Yeah, so easy enough, right? Pump drops right on in. Pumps the water right back into this aquarium. While wow, that's going on, let's go ahead and clean this one. I can clean that right now. This is going to be so quick and easy. 20 gallons. That's why I tell you, start off, if you're just getting started in the saltwater hobby or you have not got started in the saltwater hobby yet, start off with a 20 gallon. It's so easy. Whether you buy your water, make your water, or whenever you just clean it, it's just so easy. Take my word for it. That's what I started off with. And now I'm building a 1,200 gallon. So just start off with a 20. It's always going to be useful. It's a quarantine tank. Once you, out, once you outgrow it, once you learn how to take care of saltwater aquariums with a 20 gallon, you're going to obviously get a bigger aquarium. That 20 gallon, it could become a sump. It could become a refugium. It could become a holding tank. It could become a quarantine tank. It could become a, an additional tank. So many different options. But starting off with like a 75 gallon 50, I think you're setting yourself up for failure. I just feel like that's just too big. You need a sump when you go that big. You can't have it. I wouldn't do that with a hang on the back filter. I wouldn't do that with a with a sponge filter or anything like that. So I just, in my opinion, from my experience, unless you already have somebody that's gonna really hold your hand through it, I wouldn't recommend that. I want y'all to get in the hobby and stay in the hobby. So I wouldn't want to recommend something to you that I feel like I know for certain that is that can pose a problem. It's not even cheap to filter and clean a, a 75 gallon aquarium. You're going to be doing a water change every couple of weeks, right? Let's just say you do 
Let's just say you do do 20%. You got a 75 gallon. So that's 15 gallons every every couple of weeks. That's not bad. But I would recommend on a 75 gallon, probably doing like 30 gallon water change every couple of weeks. So that's 60 gallons. That's at least $65 just on water. You're gonna need top off water as well. So just on water, you might end up spending like $80 a month, which still isn't bad at all. Trust me, it's not bad at all. But when you take into account that if you have a 20 gallon, you only got to do, let's just say if you did a 50% water change, which you probably wouldn't, that's 10 gallons, that's $10, that's $20 a month, maybe $25 a month to maintain it for its water. So I think it speaks for itself, it speaks for itself. These two quarantine tanks right here are salt water, and I have them both being ran off sponge filters. Now, I know a lot of people will frown on that and say you can do it and things like that, but, you know, I wouldn't, I would not, I would never recommend this long term because I do believe, you know, saltwater fish, they benefit from having skimmers and sumps and refugiums and everything, you know, calcium reactors, all of that stuff that they need or they benefit from having. They, they really do, truly, truly do. So that's why. You know, these are all, you know, grow outs. All these are grow out tanks. You know, they're not the tanks these fish are going to stay in long term. And once I figure out a better solution, I'm going to do I'm going to go with that. All right. We are almost done with that water. And this one is almost done as well. Yeah, let me get in that corner. That's where all the nasty stuff is at. Also, I'll squeeze out the sponge filters, all that good stuff. Like I said, this one's done. So, so I probably got maybe like 80 gallons left. Not that much. And I have... This water, this tank to put some water in, and then I have three more tanks. What do I need? The 225, I'll probably do like 40. So I can do 40, 10, 10, 10. You no, know, or do 40, 20, 10. That's only five. So I got enough. Got enough. Let's go ahead and uh, all right, check it out. Look at that. Sand so white that you can't even really see it. Hey, there you go. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. So now we got this thing situated. I got to bring this pump. See how, how stale the water looks up there? See how it looks? Let me show you how I have it. All right, and now you see it. Yeah, I don't like that stagnant water. So now we got a nice little river up top. So let's take a look at this fish tank right here. They gotta be clean. Where well, I just finished cleaning. Now let me go ahead and wipe down the glass, fill up with water. All right, y'all, this thing is cleared up, looking good. That was fast looking joker. Look how small he is in his tank. And I told y'all, that this was a big aquarium for this little fish. Now he is not big in here at all. Look at all that swimming he got. So don't be concerned, don't worry. And he's not gonna be in here long. Now moving on over to this 37 gallon. Now we gotta make this quick and sweet. My, my, uh, my mics are dying and uh, I gotta get ready for work. So let's go ahead and clean this one out. I don't think I'm gonna have time for this 55 gallon and I know I'm not gonna have time for this 225 but we're gonna see what we could do i would like to get to this one because man look at all this cyano look at all that Ugh, it's nasty huh yeah <laughs> no it's nasty though right we got to take care of that okay so like i said one of my mics died i'm on the other one i thought this one's broke it's charged more than the other one 
Let's get to it. Now, how do I make this so you can still see, right? Like this, maybe. Like that. There we go. Start off by cleaning the glass. Where is... Start off with the glass, with this little scrubber, not the scraper. And even a 37 gallon is a good tank to start with. I had my, I had my 37 gallon running in the apartment with corals and everything else in here and uh all i had was two hang on the back filters running this thing that's it and i had tons of corals i was thriving had a whole lot of nice expensive fish in here gym tang purple tang that still hurt yeah that still hurt I wanted that gym tank for so long. I finally got it. But everything happens for a reason, you know. Strong believer in that. We came back stronger than ever. And one of these days, I promise, we will have another gym tank and another purple tank. Purple tank first, obviously, because they're a lot, they're a lot cheaper now. Or well, a lot cheaper. Gym tanks are a lot more expensive now. When I got my gym tank, I think I paid $375 for it. Now they're like $675 to $1,000. Yeah, looking good. I know you like, I can't see nothing. I'm just watching you. Well, at least you can see something. If you were trying to stare at what I'm looking at, You'd be even more mad. You would have clicked off because you can't even see anything. Nonetheless, you might be able to see a little bit from the side. Hopefully you can. So now let's go ahead and use the uh, the razor. I mean, y'all seen how, how bad and grimy this thing looked. So you know what it looks like. So all I'm doing right now is just scraping the glass. And then... We're going to vacuum all of this out. So the puffer been over here thriving. I want, I've been wanting to move him back. But he likes to be by himself. I don't know. He likes to be by himself. Like I've been trying to move him. And uh, moving him into the... He started off... Remember? Some of y'all may not know. I started off. I had him in the, in the, in the 55 gallon right there with the other puffer. Didn't work out. Got stressed out. Stop eating. All. Stop eating and all that. Had a little bit of water on my, on my slide. Whatever. Stop eating and all that. I'm like, all right. Put him into 125. He was good over there for a little bit. Stop eating and all that. Start hiding. Didn't want to come out. Moved him into here. And then also when he was over there, he must got got like an injury on his eye or something. Because when I, when I brought him over here. He definitely had a, uh, his eye was a little cloudy. He was very stressed out, wasn't looking good, wasn't yellow, wasn't colored up or nothing. But now, since he's been by himself, colored up brilliantly, very yellow, looks beautiful, stunning, I mean, everything. So, I don't know. I might just have to leave him by himself, unfortunately. Or at least until he's bigger. I don't know what's the deal with this guy being so uh, so finicky, but at a price tag of what it was on what it, what he was, I uh, got tanks. All about. It. We do not have to. We do not have to push the issue. 
at all. So this is, like I said, this is quick, easy. Don't really have any cyan like that. So I just want to get all this debris that's on top of the, the sand. Sometimes I get deep in the sand, but right now, we're just going to hit the top. Probably get a little deep too, depending. Nonetheless, it's a quick process. We may be able to get the 55-gallon uh, the done. Quite possibly. Almost done already, y'all. Almost done already. So I know some people, they don't really care too much about vacuuming their sand or anything like that. But I, I actually enjoy it. When I see all that debris on the sand, and I could immediately remediate that I'm on it and it feels good got to take care of that immediately well got to take care of that all right y'all that's about that's about it for the for the sand cleaning when you have a little tank like this you could really go overboard in a good way, you could really do a good job. Should I say that's better? Don't want to say overworks. That's bad. You could really do a great job at siphoning the sand when the tank is kind of clean. You know what I mean? Like you could spend more time just sand vacuuming than you do. Got to worry about when you're cleaning all your rock work and the glass and all that stuff. So that's why it's it's important to stay on top of your your cleanings because. The more you clean your aquarium, the easier it's going to be. That sounds a little backwards, don't it? I'll say it again for you. The more you clean your aquarium, the easier it's going to be. So if you are one of those people that want to wait as long as you could possibly wait, you're going to be cleaning that aquarium for a long time. But when you are on top of it every couple of weeks, it's fast, right? So just keep all that in mind. All right, that's that. Sano. Yep. Okay. So I'll probably pull out just a little bit more water. And then uh, and that's it. Then I'm going to fill it back up. So now, I don't know what kind of water change that is, but that's all I'm doing. That's it. Like I said, when you take, when you do it often, you don't have to go crazy with it. And I definitely be on top of my cleanings on these smaller aquariums because they're a lot easier. As you've seen, this took what? I just cleaned two tanks and like a few minutes compared to that first one taking an hour that's the difference but yeah so since that one was really fast we will go ahead and uh, clean that that 55 gallon. Man, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work right there. Man. Or should we do the 225? 
225 just need water. Really, it's just a quick little. Man, that one is so easy. That one's so easy. But yeah, that 55 right there is definitely not going to be easy. I even got to clean this the 60 gallon on the bottom. That one still got algae in it. I don't have a fish in there. Matter of fact, I do have a fish in there, quarantining. But um, yeah. Just like that, another one down. Okay. Lastly, 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 lastly. Now this water's still looking a bit green. It's gonna be like that. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and do something about this tank right here. As you can see, it looks pretty bad, and it needs some help. Look at all that cyanobacteria. Let me get to it. Okay, so now, since I already got water right here, I'm putting the rock right into there. Dropping all the rock in there, I'm gonna clean it in there. Repeat the process like I did with the other one. Clean the glass, siphon it, all that. All right. Wrapping room, just drop them in. Wow, come on out, dude. There you go. Man, last time you tried to hide in there. And you're not even using this to the... I'm about to put this in the other tank. They are not even using the rocks like they should. So now, got all this rubble. Now the rubble I don't like because when it, it gets all this cyano on it, it's not only hard to clean, but it's a lot to grab. So I'll probably put that inside of the sump and get it out of the tank. Now what that's going to do is serve the same purpose. I put the rubble in there because I want to protect or I want to make sure I have plenty of media for the beneficial bacteria to colonize on. So with me putting inside, putting it inside of the sump, it will still have the same purpose. It's going to still work that way. And it's not going to have all this cyano on it. And I won't have to constantly clean it off. Which is another reason why sumps are so amazing. Right now, I got all the rock out. That was quick, right? Got all the rock out. 
Now what I got to do is clean the glass and then uh, and then siphon it. See how long this is going to take. Really depends on the rock. Oh yeah, I got to clean the sponge and everything on this one. Sponge from the sponge filter. Got so much cyano on it. Yeah. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Thought it was gonna be fat, thought it was gonna be worse than this. It's actually pretty fast. Alright. It don't seem like so far I don't even need the uh, the scraper, which is good. Because as you know. There we go. Okay, so now, now all I got to do is, and I'm not finicky like that where, where I got to get every piece of, of algae that's on every section of the glass. I'm not anal like that. But I do like to get as much of it as I possibly can. So now we're going to take this net and we're going to get all this. And then we'll use the, the vacuum to get the rest. But I feel like I'd rather get this out. And next time I clean it, I'll pull out all the clamps, the half eaten shells when you see all of this stuff suspended in the water column that's when you could easily just just grab it so you go next to any of these areas and just you know just kick it up already looking a lot better Let's go ahead and scoop this out. Now, let's go ahead and siphon this thing. If I have enough water, if I have enough water, we'll do the we'll do the 225. If I have enough water, oh, there go a little water on the floor. Benefits of being in the garage. Water gets on the floor, it's not such a problem. Yeah, I gotta go to work, so I just might, just, might actually be, might, might actually be it. Alright, so now let's go ahead and fill this tank up with some water. Matter of, oh, I gotta clean the rocks. So I got it all the way drained. I got it drained as much as I want it drained. Now I just gotta clean the rocks and I can fill it back up. Now this was probably about probably like 15 gallons. So that's what I'm telling you. This is a 55 gallon. So it's not that hard. On this tank, I have a sponge filter, hang on a back filter, and an above the tank sump. So it has all of those kind of, all those different filters on it. Clean 
clean them up. Filter sponge. Just shake it on out. Just like that. And I could just put it right back on. All right. So now, and what I need to do is clean all the rocks up, and then I can put them all back. Tedious. Tedious. So let me clean these rocks real quick. As soon as I'm done with that, we're gonna put them back in the tank and we're gonna wrap up this video because I gotta go. All right guys, so now we are about to add water to this last tank. Now I can do a, I can actually do a water change on I could actually do a water change on the uh, 225 too. I got enough time. So I might actually do that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get some water in here real quick. We want to wrap this on up because uh, we got other things to do, but I do have all this rock that I plan on. So the rock, instead of putting it back in there, I'm putting it into the 37 gallon. It's gonna help with adding some more beneficial bacteria to this tank. And hey, I'd rather have it inside that little aquarium anyway. All right, that's the last piece right here. Well, I swear, it's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. One of the reasons why I didn't want the, um, one of the reasons why I didn't want the core sitting on the ground. From experience, I've seen that, that happens, this happens quite a bit. You know, learned, learned a long time ago that I could be a bit clumsy. That's why I have quick reactions because I usually expect shit to happen. Some people, they, uh, they have a problem with the fact that, that they could be a bit clumsy. You know, mistakes happen. I don't give a damn. I'm clumsy, I'm clumsy. It is what it is. Make the mistake, get over it, move past it. That's all. At least that's my model. And I gotta be my model, because like I said, I'm clumsy. So now, we got a little bit. Oh, and I, I didn't even know that this thing was leaking on me. more water on the floor than I thought but you know what now it's cleaned up that quick so let's go ahead and uh Now, I got enough water and enough time to clean that 225. This one is done. A couple things to wrap up, but other than that, this one is done. All right, 
So now lastly, like I said, we, we don't have to pull anything out of the 225 whatsoever. Don't got to pull any rock out. That's the benefit and the beauty of that 225 gallon aquarium. But what I do have to do is get everything else back going. All right, clean off. All right. Okay, so now, let's see what's up with this. All right, y'all, so now we got this 225 on our hands. Now this should be easy. All I gotta do is wipe down the glass, do a little gravel vac right here in the front. I'm gonna siphon it, refill it, done deal. Thanks, babe. Hey, babe. That was weird, huh? Yeah. It's not a whole fruit or nothing. Taste this. That's a different one. Just a little sip. Too sweet, huh? Not bad. Not bad. It's a grande vanilla bean caramel frap with um, cookie crumbles and sweet cold cold. <laughs> Hella shit. That's a, that's a lot, babe. Mm -hmm. That's that's definitely you. Again. Yeah, that's way too much. And Papa just got a little vanilla bean. Okay, I'm ready to. Yeah, definitely about ready. I'm not even gonna have time to edit it. All right, so now we run out of time. So since we run out of time, I want to just go ahead and just get this done. I'm not gonna be. You're not getting this video today. All right, y'all, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and make this quick because I gotta go, like I told you. So y'all probably not gonna get this video today. It's okay though. You'll get it later. Put up the scraper, grab the brush. We're gonna make this quick. I told you I had all these aquariums to clean today and we made it happen. Took some time though. Wasn't that bad. But look at this. This is going to be easy. You know, I don't always worry about the algae on all the glass. Just, just what I could see or what I can't tolerate, you know? probably don't know but yeah I don't really sweat all the algae soon we're gonna get in here we'll rescape it add those tank mates you good job Carter Carter said I'm doing a good job Look at that. That was a that was a lot. Look at that. Not bad at all. Real quick. Real easy. I know y'all surprised that this one is easier than the other ones and it's the biggest but that's because I don't really keep the lights on on this aquarium because they don't really really like it 
just got two eels in there, and you know eels are nocturnal. So, uh, and they don't really like to come out in the daytime and all that good stuff. My eels will do all of that. They'll come out in the daytime. They don't really care. But they definitely appreciate not having that light on all the time. So, since that's the case, they don't get that much algae. Get in there. I might go ahead and get the back a little bit. And watch. Y'all want to I cannot wait to show you how I do the water change, though. Oh, man. Y'all going to be like, what? Yep. So that's probably it, y'all. that's about it couple more spots right here but yeah that's all I'm doing like I said this one is easy I can't believe I almost skipped out on it so look there's the water chain I mean there's the uh that's all I got to do as far as scrubbing. Now, watch how I do the water change. So look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unplug my sump because that one is going to come out the water but check this out all right so look that's how you do a water change on it so we're going to go ahead and uh we'll close this one then we'll open this one ah there we go now we got that one open That's how I do a water change. That's how I take the water out. So we'll take out some of these gallons and then I'll go ahead and uh and add more water in. But yeah, this one is this one is so easy to clean. I can't say that enough. Alright y'all, so now let's go ahead and uh what's that looking like? Not much at all. But you know what? I don't have that much water left in there, so let's go ahead and close this, open this. Voila. Our pump is back working. So this is gonna start dripping. You see it? Drip, 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 drip. Come on. Anyway, I got stuff to do. You can go ahead and wait right there, wait for it to start, uh, start dripping while I get some more water into this tank. Y'all seeing that pump come back on? You see it? There you go. Alright, so now let me go ahead, put this in there, and then we're gonna crank it up. We're gonna fill this up with some more water.
All right, there it is. So we're gonna fill it back up. While that's filling up, I do have some things to do real quick. All right, y'all. That's about it right there. That's about it. Looking good. So it's based on how much water is in the sump. As long as the sump is balanced out, we good. But if it's not, that means I got to add more water. So that's how I can tell. That sump is dry. Or it's running dry. Once the sump, the line gets right there at that water level, above that water level right there, that's when I'm good. So I'm going to keep putting water in there. And we had just enough, it seems. That's amazing. So once this thing balances out like it's supposed to, looks like it's filling up right now. As soon as it balances out, I'm going to get back with you so we can wrap up this video. Man, but look at it. Look how clear this thing is. See how much water we got left in that 125 gallon. Okay, okay, still got a little bit. Yeah, still got a little bit left, that's good. And look at the sump. That's what I needed, you see that line? See how it's raised? You see how it's risen? Soon as it gets to where I need it at, we good. Man, I was just enough water in that 125 to literally clean all of these aquariums in here. All five saltwater tanks. That's amazing. Happy about that. You see that water level now? Let's go ahead and chop it. All right, y'all. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you were inspired by something. We did a lot. Clean five saltwater aquariums in one video. It's a lot of work. I hope you appreciate that. I hope that you were able to take something from that. Any tip, any trick, hopefully it's yours. But anyway, man, it's Friday. Hope everybody had yeah, it's Friday. Hope everybody had a good week. I hope y'all have a good weekend planned. If not, start planning it right now. Anyway, you know we got work to do this weekend. The grind doesn't stop. So you want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you want to make sure that notification bell is hit so you know every time I upload. And everyone, if y'all like the video, like the video. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. Peace.